Hello and welcome to Excel Academy. First of all, congratulations for choosing Excel Academy for Advanced Company Law. So in December 2017, you are writing your Advanced Company Law examination. So for that examination, we are having classes for you where you will be understanding company law in a practical way. Please understand that everybody is studying the same textbook, right? The study material given by ICSI. But then if you want to score more than 60, what should you do? You have to approach the subject practically and that is where I will be helping you. And in this free video series, you will be getting an idea of what is company law, how to study company law, how to analyze the sections and how to write the answers. And I will also discuss with you some of the old question papers. In company law, all the students tell me that they studied the full book, but then when they wrote in the examination, they did not get the marks which they deserve. Why is this? It is simply because nobody is taking a practical approach. There are many classes out there, many online classes, many physical classes which is going on, but then nobody is concentrating on the practical aspects. Me being a company secretary in practice, this is something which I do every day. So I will be sharing my experience the practical approach of the company law which will make you score very well in your examination. Please remember the person who is correcting your paper is again a person who is a practicing company secretary or a company secretary in employment. They are working with the company law every day. Every day they are working with Companies Act 2013. So if such a person is correcting, they expect you to know the subject practically. Here again there are two types of students. One is you may be already doing your practical training that is your internship or what we call as articleship training. And the second type of student is who is coming after CS executive program directly into professional. There is definitely a small advantage for students who are doing the practical training in a company or with a uh, practicing company secretary. And even then, you will not be working on every section of company law when you are working. But in your examination, the entire 470 sections is applicable for examination. So, if you want to study every chapter practically, the only way is to take personal guidance from a company secretary who is in practice. And that is where I think I can help you in taking a practical approach. Whether you are a student who is doing training, whether you are a student who is not doing training, these classes will help you a lot. And why we have made these initial classes free is simply because you will get an idea of how to face the examination and understand the subject. By the end of these four videos, you will get confidence about what is company law, how to study the section, what is the meaning of rule, how to draft the resolution, how I should write in the examination, how to approach the question, etc. This will make your life very, very easy and I will be helping you in that. So the first video is relating to striking off the name of the company. Now you will understand how to do the strike off and your video will come now. In this module, we are going to do chapter 17 or lesson 17 in the study material. This is related to striking off of companies or removal of names. In Companies Act 1956, the concept was strike off of companies. In Companies Act 2013, the same concept is called as removal of names. Why? If you understand, in 1956, we did not have computers, etc. So they used to maintain all the names of the companies in a physical register. So whenever they had to remove that company's name, you had to physically strike it off in a pen. That is why the concept was called strike off. Now everything is electronic mode and you can't really strike off the name of a company, but you're removing the name of a company. From where? From the register of companies maintained by registrar of companies. Like in our school or college, we have attendance register. So if some student has been absent for two to three months continuously or they have not paid the fees, usually they remove the name by striking off their name. Or sometimes the student will leave the school or college. Even that time they remove it. So 
similarly how a school maintains the list of all the students in attendance register the roc maintains the list of all the companies registered in that particular state for each state in the register of companies maintained by roc which is the registrar of companies so here this is directly connected to another chapter which is related to winding up or dissolution. So we can say that strike off is like coma, removal of name is like coma and winding up is like death. That is the main difference. And removal of name is not applicable for all companies. We will go to that little later. First let us try to understand what are the sections applicable in removal of name. In Companies Act 2013 we have section 248 to section 252 which deals with removal of names first let us try to understand 248 in two to three parts the first part is the removal of name relating to the 2013 act was notified only from 26th December 2016. So before that till 25th December till Christmas of 2016 what was applicable? Companies Act 1956 section 560. From 26th December we are going to have any removal of name only in 2013 Act. Going further when can the first point is when can the ROC remove the name? There are two conditions. First one when the company does not start the business, does not commence the business within one year of incorporation. So if the company has incorporated 1st January 2017 and they do not do any business till 31st December 2017, if the registrar wants, it is not compulsory, it is not automatic, it is only if the registrar takes it on his own motion, he is having the power from 1st January 2018 to remove the name from the register of companies. And the second condition is the registrar can remove when the company has no business for two immediate preceding years from the time he looks into the register of members and within that there is another condition the company should not have filed to become a dormant company under section 455. So just to quickly summarize, there are just two conditions. First one, not commence business from one year of incorporation. The second one, company has not done business for two immediate preceding years. So the word immediate is very important. If in exam, if you simply write uh, two preceding years or two previous years, that will be wrong. Immediate preceding years is the exact word. Now going further the brief procedure, the brief procedure is like this, the notice is sent to the company by the ROC telling that we want to remove the name of your company for any of the reasons already discussed and the company is given 30 days time to respond to the notice and if they don't respond to the notice the ROC can take further action. Then this condition of removal of names cannot be applied for companies with charitable purpose that is section 8 companies because in section 8 companies we have a concept of license only when the license is cancelled can the ROC remove the name so without that we cannot go under section 248 and notice which is given over here to the companies should also be published in the official gazette now let us go to how the company can apply to remove its own name where the registrar is not taking action. So there are two options, one ROC removes the name of the company, second option company itself is going to file to ROC that please remove our name. So for this we have to refer to section 248 subsection 2. In section 248 subsection 2 there are two conditions for a company to apply under this particular section. The first condition is the company should have extinguished all its liabilities. That means there should be no creditors, there should be nobody to whom the company owes money. Not even the person who gives tea to the company, he should not come tomorrow and tell that you get 1000 rupees. Right? So all the liabilities should be extinguished. The important word here is all. So not even a single rupee should be pending which the company should give to the outsiders. The second condition is or it is more like a procedural step where a special resolution has to be passed or 
consent of the seventy-five percent of the members should be taken. Why they have given this or condition? Because we have two type of companies: companies with share capital and companies without share capital. So, if there is a company where there are only members where they don't have share capital, that time seventy-five percent of the members should give consent. And where there is share capital, seventy-five percent of the shareholding the shareholders should give the consent. Let us say there are ten shareholders in a company and two shareholders. Shareholders hold 80% and eight shareholders hold 20%. So if those two shareholders agree, it is sufficient. 75% uh, is passed when there is share capital. And suppose the same company they don't have share capital. If 10 people are there, eight people should agree because they don't have share capital. All are having equal rights and powers. Eight people agree, then we can go for removal of name. Now coming to the procedure under 248. Subsection two. That is what should the company do. The first thing is obviously I have not written on the board. Company will file an application to the ROC. Then what happens after that? The public notice is given by the ROC. So here the ROC will give public notice saying that so and so company is applied to remove its name. If anybody has objection, please come and inform my office. That is the ROC. Next, if the company is governed by any special act, let us say, for example, just for example, LIC. LIC wants to close. That time they are governed by both Companies Act and the LIC Act. Or, for instance, any insurance company. They are governed by both the insurance uh, IRDA and also by our Companies Act. At that time. For such companies, you should get approval from the regulatory body. It could even be for electricity companies. The third step is notice should be given in the official gazette. Apart from the public notice, official gazette notice should go so that everybody is aware and the procedure is complete. After the notice period is over, which happens to be only thirty days, the removal of the name can be done by the ROC. The ROC can remove the name from the register of companies and after they remove the name we have to give one more notice in the official gazette saying that this company name has been removed at that time nobody can come and object this is just a intimation that the company name has been removed now going to the most important point in 248 subsection 2 even after the company's name has been removed the liability of the directors will continue So even if the company name is removed tomorrow, the library, the directors can be caught for any of the misdeeds or any of their past actions. Now we will discuss more in the end of this video relating to the forms related to this particular section, which is STK two. In our study material, they have given only about section two forty eight, but to understand removal of names, we should know. 248 249 250 251 and 252 let us briefly understand section 249 first in section 249 they talk about restrictions of making an application that means which kind of companies cannot make an application under 248 so please remember 248 is the main section the other sections are connected to 248 whatever we study in the other section it means it is relation to 248 so under 248 companies who cannot make a application are if in the 3 months before making the application the important condition is 3 months before making the application the company should not have first condition changed the name or shifted the registered office from one state to another state this is very very important the second condition is disposal of the value of the property that means within 3 months before the making the application company should not have disposed the large amounts of its property okay then any m and a application should not be pending any merger or amalgamation application should not be pending before any authority and the winding up application should not be pending this is very very important if any company makes a application under 248 that is even the 3 months before making the application any of these items have happened that time the fine which they are going to face is up to 
1 lakh rupees. It is not 1 lakh, it is up to 1 lakh rupees. Now coming to section 250. In section 250, the very important thing for us to understand is what are the conditions after the closure? That means even if the company's name is removed from the register of companies, these two items, that is the real, realize the amount due. That means if the company has any amount which is uh, yet to be realized, they can realize that even if the company name has been removed. That is for realization. And then payment of liabilities. So not only that they can take the money which they have to receive, but they should also pay the money which they have to give to others after the closure, that is removal of name. That is the condition under section 250. Now, coming to section 251, that is about fraudulent application, what the Companies Act calls as fraudulent application. Whenever a fraudulent application has been made under 248, the management of the company, that is the board of directors and the key managerial personnel are jointly and severally liable. That means even if you are silent, even if you are quiet, you are not party to it actively. Just the fact that you are in the management, you are jointly and severally liable if you make a fraudulent application. Then the punishment for this management uh, and the board of directors is very very strict because the provisions of fraud section 447 will be applicable where the punishment goes up to 10 years imprisonment we all know that and also they have to face prosecution the management has to face prosecution this is because there are many companies which have some other problems they are involved in some other fraud they are doing money laundering they are shell companies for them section 248 is a very very big loophole they can simply file application of removal of name but they would not have qualified under the uh, conditions to apply so in such a scenario because this section is so serious they are trying to deter such companies by having a very very strict punishment under section 251 which talks about fraudulent application now coming to section 252 end of the day after all this there are some cases some exceptions where there could have been a mistake or somebody has been troubled because the company name is removed even for them there is one final ray of hope that is section 252 section 252 talks about appeal to nclt that means when a company's name has been removed from the registrar of companies and the entire procedure is over what is the solution there is only one which is under 252 you can apply to nclt who can apply any of the aggrieved party aggrieved party means suppose it could be creditors or any outside person employee etc but they have to make the application within three years from the date of removal of name so they have three years time where they can go to nclt and they can ask for the company uh, name to be restored then to file to ROC you can file form number INC 28 has to be filed and then the restoration which can be taken place by not by aggrieved party by the company itself if they want to they have 20 years so anytime for 20 years they can bring the company back to life. Now going to our most important part which is companies removal of names from ROC rules 2016. This rules came to effect from I told in the first part of the video which is 26th December 2016. Till 26 December, we had the old Companies Act 1956, Section 560. Now, under these rules, this is very important for you to write an exam. And till now, what we studied is the substantive law. This is going to make the difference in advanced company law of CS professional. Yes, there are so many rules in this particular rules, rule number 1, 2, 3, like that. But the most important rules for exam are first one, rule 2. The rule 2 talks about ROC may 
can remove the company's name you already know that ROC can remove but you don't know it is rule 2 so when you quote this in the exam that is going to fetch more marks without any doubt then rule 3 rule 3 talks about the format of the notice to the company that is ROC give the notice to company that notice should be in the format of HTK1 and ROC has to blindly copy that format which is given in the rules and they have to send the notice to the company then rule 4 rule 4 is nothing but it's a e form e form like how we file to mca website whenever a company wants to apply for removal of name so we have two options roc remove the name the second option is company only apply to remove the name so when company wants to apply to remove its names from the register of companies they have to file e form stk2 it is the application to the roc so this e form stk2 the practical procedure what all should you give in this e form stk2 the first thing is the NOC from the authority if applicable that is if they are having any other registration or any other electricity department the insurance or drugs and cosmetics or for that matter even income tax because they may have some income tax pending so IT department should say that we have no uh, no objection for this company to close then they have to file STK3 it is not a e form it is just a format of the indemnity bond so the directors of the company should give an indemnity bond Bond and that format has been given as STK3 you cannot make it in your own words it should be in the exact format given in the rules that is called as STK3 you can take the same concept and then the statement of accounts the latest statement of accounts should be filed in STK2 and it has to be certified by a qualified chartered accountant who is in practice then STK4 STK4 is again the format of the affidavit who should give affidavit same thing the directors of the company should give the affidavit so please remember these points which we are discussing now are what they are attachments to STK2 STK2 is the e form so these attachments we have to scan it and attach it to the form STK2 so the next scan copy which you have to give is list of any pending litigation are there any cases pending in the court it could be something like check bounce case even something small like that or it could be a big case or somebody has filed a case against company or consumer complaint it could be anything so the list of pending litigation should be filed in STK2 if it is there if it is not there no problem problem then stk 5 and 6 are again formats what format is it it is public notice format that is the roc when it gives a public notice that we want to remove the name of the company etc that format they have to give in public notice 5 and 6 then stk 7 is the last notice or the final order you can tell that the company has been struck off even for that there is a format and that format is called as stk 7 so these formats these form numbers are very important Please Please remember only STK2 is E form. All others are formats where we have to fill it, take a normal printout, then director sign and scan it and attach it to which form? STK2. Now I am sure you understood the section related to striking off very well. We have taken this up in a practical aspect. Now in our next video we will be releasing another chapter. So I hope you will wait for the video and very soon you will get messages. And also if you have any doubt relating to this video you can drop a message in WhatsApp in 973-973-3400. I am sure to respond to you if not immediately but as soon as possible. I hope to see you in the next video, our free video relating to the next chapter. Watch it out in the next couple of days. Once again, thank you for choosing Excel Academy and I am sure by the end of these four videos, you will understand company law and you will face the examinations with full confidence.